Hi there, we're putting a lowering kit on my soft tail today. So um, this is a view from uh, under the bike. These are the two soft tail shocks. And there's four bolts to uh, take out. To, uh, we need to take the shocks completely out of the bike. So um, the front bolts are not that tight. I mean, they're, they're gonna feel tight, but it's, they got some Loctite in it, uh, tread locker, so you gotta break that seal. Uh, use a hammer and, and a wrench. Now, once they're removed, um, you're uh, going to need to uh, compress the spring to uh, get that little clip out. So I use a pick and just take the clip right out. There we go. And uh, release the pressure and there we go. The spring just expands out of the box. Now you just pull on the shock and you're gonna have the spring in one hand and shock in the other one. Set the spring aside. Now I set the, um, the uh, nut and the press in the, uh, in the vise. I'm gonna unscrew the shock. That shock absorber just unscrews from the, uh, that nut is hollow. And there's, there we go. And I'm gonna lift it up and there's a flat on the, on the, on the bolt uh, part of the uh, stock Harley <laughs> part. And I'm gonna use the, uh, the lock nut to actually remove the plate. They sell a, uh, a wrench for that purpose, but um, you don't really need it. Just use the nut and take it out. There we go. You remove that nut, you're gonna need it. You transfer it to the Arlen Ness part, the nut and the plate. So you screw the plate in until the uh, part is flush with the plate and uh, screw it back in. The Arlen Ness part is easy to put in the vise. It's, it's got the shape of a nut. So I'm going to give you a trick here. Since we don't have that uh, special wrench, I put the uh, I use a, a wrench to uh, to tighten that nut, and I use a screwdriver in one of the holes to prevent the uh, the plate from uh, turning. Let's put it real tight. There we go. Now we're gonna screw the uh, shock absorber back in. Uh, don't forget to put some tread lock. Good idea anytime you work on a bike, try to lock just about everything so vibration won't loosen stuff up. Now this thing needs to be tight. Don't go overboard, but you know, just make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, that's it. We got a complete assembly. Now we need to uh, bring it back to the spring and recompress it to reinstall the C-clip. So I'm gonna put it back in the press. And, uh, I mean, that uh, press is uh, something that's preventing a lot of guys from doing this uh, work themselves. Um, I mean, some people actually get by with, uh, you know, are pretty creative and get by with a, with a vice and other type of uh, inventive contraptions. A press naturally is the easiest way of doing it. I have one in the shop, so. The um, C-clip goes back in. Naturally, we clean everything to make sure the groove is clean. You don't want any dirt in there. And uh, bang. That's it. So you do the other one exactly the same, and now we need to put him back in the bike. And there's uh, this whole thing in the instructions about, uh, you know, adjusting them before putting it in. And I just screw them right, right, you know, till the end because you'll need that to put it back in 
Uh, you're gonna put some treadlock again. Don't forget the treadlock. Don't forget the washer either. Okay, the adjustment, uh, you're gonna use the um, the two nuts uh, that uh, sandwich that uh, rubber bushing there to adjust them. The back ones, you're gonna need to uh, actually count the turns. You want them uh, equal length. So, uh, and you adjust them so that this, uh, the, the, lower, the, uh, the control arm uh, does not extend past this part of the, uh, of the frame. As you see, mine extends a little further because I ride solo all the time. So I don't, you know, I've lowered it a little, a little more. That's a question of choice. You can always ride it and see if it bottoms out. So uh, that's it. That's a complete uh, installation. And uh, hey, keep the rubber side down.